Hello there, and welcome to this week's episode of the Red Delta Project Podcast, where we teach you how to maximize your results with minimalist approaches to diet and exercise, like with grind-style calisthenics bodyweight training. My name is Matt Schifferly, founder of the Red Delta Project, and author of the books Fitness Independence and Smart Bodyweight Training. This week, we're talking about a very important subject that's come up in the comments from some of the recent RDP YouTube videos. Last week, I posted a video asking the simple question, if you could give up one thing in your diet or exercise repertoire and suffer no repercussions from giving it up, what would that thing be? And I ask this because unfortunately, a lot of us are doing things in fitness that we'd really rather not do, but we're only doing it because we feel like we have to do it. Whether it's a particular exercise like running or burpees, or it's a dietary practice like never eat ice cream or don't eat bread or whatever, we all feel like there's something that we have to do in order to get results and we're forcing ourselves to do it. However, with the fitness independence mentality and we use a principle-based approach, the reality that most of us actually face is that these things we're forcing ourselves to do aren't really necessary. The things you don't want to do, you may not have to do in general. So I've been covering various things in the previous videos. You can check it out on the Red Delta Project YouTube channel. But one of the things that definitely came up as a common theme was I wish I didn't have to do exercises or workouts that I didn't enjoy doing, that weren't any fun. And this really brought about more of a topic of how do I just enjoy or have fun with my workouts? And at first this may seem like a bit of a trivial topic, like you get these machoistic, rough and tumble type of attitudes of it's not supposed to be fun, not supposed to enjoy it, just put your head down and suffer through it and everything. And I don't agree with that idea at all because everything about your motivation and your desire to do something depends on a cost to benefit ratio. There's always a cost to any amount of work that you're doing, cost of energy, cost of time, cost of money perhaps. And then there's a, a reward, a series of rewards, money reward like with a job, or there could be emotional rewards or things like give us a, a warm and fuzzy feeling when we're done. So your motivation, therefore your likelihood to do something depends very much on having as low a cost as possible and as high a return and reward as you can manage. And making your workouts more enjoyable and more fun increases that reward, therefore increasing your likelihood that you're gonna to stick to it, you're gonna put more effort into it, and you're gonna get way better results. This also echoes the sentiment that I have been talking about with a lot of previous videos where effective workouts feel good. This isn't about how much pain and suffering can you endure. The better your workouts are, the better you should feel about doing them, emotionally, mentally, and physically. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're always going to be a walk down easy street. And if anything, a lot of the latest research over the past several decades in psychology shows that human beings actually don't have the most fun and enjoyment doing easy things. Ch consider the, uh, the book Flow State. All the work on flow by Mihail Chicken I'm sorry, I can never pronounce that name. Right here, right? He discovered that this flow state, the psychology of optimal performance, is when we feel our best, we perform our best, and we just feel amazing while doing it. You know these flow states when things just seem to be firing off and time passes really quickly and you just feel like you can do no wrong. That's a flow state. But what he's observed is that we are happiest and most fulfilled in our flow states and flow states don't happen under the easiest of circumstances. You don't get in a flow state watching television. You don't get in a flow state just flipping through social media or doing mindless busy work. Instead, your flow state actually depends on doing something that's fairly challenging and pushes the envelope of your capabilities just enough. Not too much, but just enough. And that's one of the secrets to helping you enjoy your workouts and get the best results from them because there's that sweet spot where you're getting your most effective return. So the first point is to swap out any sort of physical activities or, act or habits that you just don't jive with you because we all have these things. We all have that something or other that we just don't like to do and we never will like to do it no matter what. So unless you have to do that type of activity or exercise for a performance goal, 
For example, if I were to need to pass a PT test and I needed to be able to run a mile in a certain amount of time, running is not optional anymore. I have to be good at running, therefore I have to run. But in the general context of health and fitness, things like building muscle, losing weight, and being generally healthy, there's not a lot that's actually mandatory when it comes to what and how you eat or the exercises that you do. In fact, a lot of it is very optional. When you understand the principles behind losing weight and building muscle and stuff, the actual methods you use are actually rather trivial. It really doesn't matter that much. It, you could do pull-ups or you could do pull-downs. You could lift free weights or you could be on the machine. It doesn't matter. You're gonna build muscle and strength just about the same way either way you do about it. Same with dieting sort of thing. It doesn't really matter what you do and how you go about it. But it does matter if you're forcing yourself to do things that just don't jive with you. The next couple of tips concern this idea of getting into that flow state sweet spot with your workouts. Now, this only happens when you're doing an activity that is challenging enough to kind of push your abilities, but it's not so hard that it's giving you this sensation of futility or frustration. And that's the secret to, to the whole thing. And there's a number of things we got to address with this. One is get out of that whole work yourself to death mindset. Your body does not change because of stress. It does not change because of hard work. It does not change because of blood, sweat, and tears. Those are merely outcomes of what you're doing. It's hard work, I'm always saying, it's like gas in your car. You need to use it in order to get somewhere, but it never promises you're going to get to where you want to go unless you know what you're doing. And it's the same thing with hard work. There's no promise of success in hard work. And in fact, the road to failure and mediocrity is paved with hard work. Actually, let me take it another step further. Most of the people who are failing at doing what they can at something in life are failing because of hard work, because they're spending so much time and energy into it. Why do businesses go out of business? Because they require too much hard work. Why do people fail when it comes to exercise? Because they're working too hard. Because again, it's a cost to benefit ratio. Hard work is your cost. So when you are thinking of giving up, you're losing motivation, you're working too hard for the relative amount of result that you are getting. So what you wanna do is if you're working as hard as you possibly can and busting your tail and just trying to get through the workout, I recommend scale it back. Do less, do less volume, do less weight, do less miles, do a little bit less. Basically what you're trying to do is take the edge off release some of the pressure in that emotional and physiological pressure cooker. You're never going to get the results you want by always pushing your limits of what you can stand to do. Instead, scale back just a little tiny bit and work on instead improving the quality that you can work with. Lift a little lighter, take back a few repetitions. This is what's going to make it a lot easier for you to push forward because it's not gonna require just as much work, but you're still gonna get a lot of benefit from it. Now, on the flip side of that, you wanna make sure you're challenging yourself enough to push against your limits a bit. Because again, we don't have this flow state where we feel and perform our best when we're kinda of just kicking back and relaxing. When we're watching TV or we're doing something mundane that doesn't take a whole lot of mental concentration. So that's why you want to do activities that are just challenging enough to push your ability. Now, not so much that you're overloading yourself. And this is one of the reasons why the backfilling strategy from Grindstyle Calisthenics works so well. Because the first time you do it, I won't get too far into it, and you can check out the videos for more information on this, but the whole idea behind the backfilling strategy in Grindstyle Calisthenics is to self-regulate to hit you exactly at the level you need to be at. It's not gonna overload you and make you do too much, and it's not going to be so low key that you have to, uh, you're bored with it either. You do three sets, first time you do it, you just get what you can for your repetitions, and then every workout, you only need to progress one set. So your first two sets, for example, you keep exactly the same. What that does is it builds your competence with that exercise. It improves your ability to do it so you're not overloading yourself. So if you started off with 12 pull-ups, for example, 
What ends up happening over subsequent workouts is those 12 pull-ups become a little bit easier and you feel more comfortable doing them and you can get better at doing those 12 pull-ups. You're not always trying to do as many as you can possibly do until your arms fall off. And that allows you to scale back just enough to hit that flow state. Meanwhile, you're back filling on the last set or the middle set. And you're saying, okay, last time I got six repetitions. Now I'm trying to go for seven or maybe even eight repetitions. That's gonna push you just enough to give you that challenge. And those two things combined will ensure that you can get into that flow state and really enjoy your workout. The next tip is kind of along the same idea, but it's very important and this, it's this. Don't go into a workout trying to just work as hard as possible. Don't go into workout trying to prove something. Like, oh, I've gotta prove how much I can lift or how far I can run or anything. The whole point of your workout regardless of your goals or anything, the entire point of your workout is to accomplish something. So you should always start a workout knowing what you're trying to accomplish. And it has to be something quantifiable, like I'm trying to improve stability on my strap dips. I'm trying to run the mile 10 seconds faster. I'm trying to do one more repetition on the last set. Whatever that is, the point of a workout is to accomplish something. And if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish in every single exercise, rep and set, then your mind's gonna be in this no man's land of, I'm not so sure what I'm trying to do, I guess I'm just gonna try and work as hard as I can and hope for the best. And that's where things get boring, they get tedious, they get frustrating, and they're not a lot of fun. But the second you've got a target, the second you say, my target today is to do 12 pull-ups, boom. That gives your brain and even your very soul something to shoot for. And it's a lot more fun to try and aim for a definitive goal than it is to just throw the basketball into the air a bunch of times. Like if I told you, throw the basketball against a wall, you'd be like, I'm so bored. But the second I give you a hoop and say, try to make this, it becomes a lot more fun. So you need a definitive target in every workout you ever do. And again, grind style gives you that by giving you a repetition target or giving you something technical like saying, get into a deeper dip or whatever the case may be. But having that target and trying to hit it can make all the difference in the world. And the last piece of advice that I give you is make sure you're focusing most of your attention on things that are actually productive for your goals. Because there's a lot of exercises and a lot of things you can do out there that are hard work, that are gonna keep you busy, but are they really productive in helping you do what you want? Because most of the time, especially if you have a definitive goal, you don't need to do very much. You don't need 20 different exercises. So you wanna be very picky about what you are doing. And that's one of the reasons why like, well, I don't do burpees because they have nothing to do with any of my goals. I don't care about my burpee endurance. I don't care about being able to do them. I don't care about my proficiency and explosiveness in burpees. And always remember that your physical ability to do something is specific to that activity. That's why I always, uh, quantify strength and endurance. People are like, you don't do derpies? I don't care about my burpee endurance. I care about my cycling endurance, which is different. There's no such thing as just endurance. There's no such thing as just strength. People ask me all the time, Matt, how much can you bench press? I don't know. I don't care about my bench press strength. I care about my pull-up strength. I care about my dip strength. So quantify the thing that you're after and primarily focus on things that are going directly after that goal specifically, because everything else is just going to be wasted effort and work. There's nothing that's more frustrating, demotivating, and just basically a kick in the teeth than doing a lot of work that doesn't help you get what you want. So I hope you found this podcast a little bit enlightening. If you're watching this on YouTube, check out these videos here for more on grind style calisthenics, my backfilling strategy. And if you're listening to this on Apple, Stitcher, Google Play, or all the other places you get your podcast, check it out on the RDP YouTube channel. And as always, I love hearing from you folks. Greatly appreciate your attention during this 20 minutes. I really do appreciate it. And if you leave me comments and questions, you know, I'm always gonna read them. I always respond to them. And I like hearing from you and what you think as well. I'll talk to you next week. Till then, be fit, live free.